Hello. Welcome. Um, I'm Brianna Dane. I am the playwright and the director of this play. Um, some things you should know is this is a game show, and there's going to be signs that like cue you to applause or awe or boo. So feel free to get into it. The crowd that was here earlier today for the school, they got really into it. Um, so uh, keep the aisles clear because we do run through the aisles quite a bit in this play. And um, during intermission, the kids are going to come out in character to sign autographs in character and talk to you about the show. So get a program and get signatures from them. So other than that, I hope you enjoy the show. being a live studio audience of Survive and Thrive. I'm Florence, the producer of the show, and tonight we will be filming the entire season right in front of you, but will later be divided up into separate episodes. Keep in mind that we will be sworn to secrecy as the outcome of the show until all episodes air. Now, the rules are pretty simple. Please stay seated and turn all your phones off. Now all we need is our host. Where is she? We're about to start. Who knows? The biggest unpredictable. Oh, we could have stuff stuff that don't listen. Hey, I listen. I'm here every day doing my job. If only Dominga did that. So what I'm hearing is I'm your favorite employee? Anyone but Dominga is my favorite employee. Ouch. You know she really is a good host. I just cannot work under these conditions. Sorry, Dominga can be a challenge to work with. Hey! Watch it. This place is important. Dominga, you need to start to take this show more seriously. Let's be real. I am the show horse. I want everyone coming to your seat. I have it all. The pizzazz, the looks, the ability to have a pop full sense of grace and ease. Dominga, if you don't start working on your attitude, I'll have to cut your contract and replace you. You can't do that. I have lawyers already. Seriously? Yes. I thought you were making that up. Like when you told me about ghosts or Canadians. Dominga, if you don't change your behavior, I'll have to cut your contract and replace you. You can't fire me. I'm such a great leader to the show. I'm like how are you like George Washington? Well, we both know how to rally the troops. We both look great on a dollar bill. And I happen to know to chop down a cherry tree and take the British. You have one season to prove you can be a team player, not a leader. Then who's the leader? Me! It's my show! Not everyone can be a leader. Some people have to follow. Not with that attitude, they can't. Look, Dominga, let's just start. Fine. But remember, games are played in season two, except for solitaire. This isn't over! In five, four, three, two. Hello, I'm Dominga, and welcome to Survive and Thrive. This season we have a bunch of thrills, chills, twists, and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. As we all know, this is a game played in teams of two who do an assortment of challenges. After each challenge, a pair will be eliminated until we have one team left as victor. Now, let's meet some of our teams, shall we? First off, we have best friends Mortimer and Earl. Here they come now! Teamwork. Look, every team needs a leader, even if that's a team of two. And Earl gets that, right? Um, well. Let's hear it for Mortimer and Earl! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, a leader. Every pair, group, organization, why even TV shows need one? A strong one with, I don't know, pizzazz, looks, the ability to go to pocket full sunshine with grace and ease. What did you say, lovely audience? <laughs> not solid pair for it. Show the next pair now. Our next pair consists of a set of twins with a very special relationship. Let's meet Sabra and Sybil. <laughs> so, as conjoined twins, what advantages do you two might have? Well, we already do everything as a pair, so we have no choice but to compromise and work together. 
Well, some of us don't compromise. Some of us make choices without telling the other one. Are you still upset about that? You yes, just don't mind that we're going to talk to you about that. And now we go on. No, 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 no. As conjoined twins, you two must be equal in a lot of things. What things do you have that might be different? To be honest with you, Domingo, I am the one pulling the weight between the two of us. What she meant to say with my lovely sister Sabra is carrying all the weight. No. Yes. No. Yes. This is just like the time I've got to just came Well, good luck to the both of you. Our next pair consists of the smartest person in the world and her fact checker. Let's meet Alex Luna and Odette. So, Odette, what is it like being the smartest person in the world? Well, it's like what Abraham Lincoln said, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Didn't Benjamin Franklin say that? Um, no, that was definitely Abraham Lincoln. It says it right here. I'm pretty sure it was. No, it was Abraham Lincoln. It says it right here in black and white. What book is that? A very official book, that's for sure. So, Absolute, what is it that exactly that you do as the world's smartest person's fact checker? Well, I just check out credible all the Dutch answers are. I mean, she's intelligent, brilliant, and between you and me and this lovely audience, I get a huge bonus check she isn't proven wrong. So no matter what, I make sure she stays the smartest person in the world. But she really is the smartest person in the world, right? Yeah, right. Well, if you were, if you were being honest, I was such a brilliant person in our mix. Thank you so much for joining us. Our next pair is the evil duo of Golgotha and Fang. Here they come now. So, for a profession, you are evil? That is correct. And how do you make a living off of just being evil. Well, the pay isn't great, but I get 401k evil insurance. And how long have you exactly been evil? It's something I've always been passionate about. I went to the Forest University with a major in plotting and scheming and a minor in malicious laughter. Malicious laughter. Yeah, like this. <laughs> yes, well, that is uh, something. I've been Golgotha's henchman for a few years now. She has so much hatred in her heart and is capable of so much damage. It's my true honor to be part of the experience. Right, and how do you plan on winning Survive and Thrive? We will be merciless to our competitors. We will destroy the competition, letting nothing stand in our way till we rule the world! <laughs> yes, boo for me. Use your freedom of speech, I still have it. Yes, well, there's that. Now that we have all our pairs, let's meet our individual entries. These are people who entered by themselves who will be paired with another individual player. Let's meet our first individual entry, Cleo! I'm so happy to be here today, be here today, be here today. I'm ready to play, play the game. Are you ready to have fun? I know I'm ready to make so many new friends. My name's Cleo. Can you say Cleo? Cleo, Cleo! Uh, Cleo, what are this? is a family-friendly show. We're not exactly geared towards small children. Oh, but I love children. I'm a preschool teacher. That makes sense. Really, the world should be more like preschool. Nap time, snacks, laughter, singing, friends, no taxes, no traffic, no deadlines, no budgeting, and everything is nice and simple. Looks like someone doesn't want to grow up. I may be a middle-aged woman, but when I'm at work, I'm just another kid, like you. No, I'm not a kid. Well, that's okay, because we can still all be best friends. What do you think will make you intimidating to other players? No need to scare anyone. I think if we all work together, we can all be winners. No, not everyone can be a winner. Only one team wins. Well, that's okay, because we'll all try our hardest and we'll all have fun. Sure. All right, Cleo, are you ready to meet your partner? Oh, I'd love to. Next up, we have Raffaella. Here she comes. Raphael, you look nice today. I always look nice, darling. So, Raphael, what is it exactly that you do? I'm what you call a fashion expert. I look for style, and I share my expertise with those who need it. I mean, I would want someone to tell it, me if I were clashing. I'm doing them a favor, really. Speaking of... What? What's wrong with my outfit? Love colors are so early 2000s as a throwback from the 80s. It's too early to bring back that look again. And in my opinion, that style just needs to die, honey. So you hate things that are clashing. Do I ever? I could spend more than five minutes with someone wearing plaid with stripes. Perfect. Here's your partner, Cleo. Ah, who dressed you? A four-year-old? My cast did tell me to wear the sweater to 
today? It's horrid. I demand a new partner. I simply cannot work with this. Sorry, no trading partners. Oh, well, if I have to. I suppose I could work for this. Well, you have to lose sweater, though. Okay. A sweater vest? I can't. Let's hear it for the pair. Cleo and Raphaela. Let's hear it for all this year's teams on Survive and Thrive. All right. Our first challenge is a hunt for... What was that? So long since we've seen people. No, it hasn't been. Were you two stranded on this island? Seven years. Seven years I've been wandering these beaches. My ship went down. The only survivors being me and my skipper here, Quincy. We've been living off our wits and will to survive. Living off of nothing but coconuts and crabs. We stay out in the beating sun all day and huddle together for warmth, listening to the howls of wolves at night. There are wolves here? No. We were on a cruise that was on a tour of islands, and we forgot to get back on our boat. We've only been out here maybe three days. I tried to get us a hotel to stay on the other side of the island, but she insists on wandering around. The places I've been, the things I've seen. The only place you've been is at the same two-mile stretch of this beach. The only thing you've seen are two seagulls fighting over some seaweed. The wasted time, my memories from civilization, Fading! I don't even remember my family members' names or what they look like. Your parents are Ted and Susan and your brother Bobby. We faced them this morning because we have service here. We're not really stranded. The worst of all is Gorgontosh. Who's Gorgontosh? She's a two-headed monster who lives up in the hills of this island. I've seen her myself. She has For a- For the last time, there was no Gorgontosh. That's a monster you made up. There's no two-headed- There! You see? It's Gorgontosh! <laughs> Well, next time we'll just stick to my plan. That was your plan. That was the reason that we he got so. Aha! You're trapped now. You have no choice but to surrender your duck to us. <coughs> no way. Then prepare for the wrath of my death ray. Ah! The duck is ours. You'll never win now. Look what you did! Me, you and This is no time for us to sit Hurry! One runway, it's not sand beaches. We need to play the game and go an extra mile because if we do it, Jenna brings a smile. Stop 
coffee like that. Am I sweating? I can't be sweating. This shirt is dry clean only. <laughs> we have fun all day long. When we stop singing, come on. I'll just find this thing. Okay, if someone needs to take a potty break before we go. Oh. Why can't we find this thing? I think we should go that way. I think we should go that way. Well, I'm calling, so my opinion matters more. This is not like I did. We're all in this morning. It's your guitar! Oh, don't eat me. Eat her instead. I mean, she's a healthy eater, even. I mean, look at all that muscle. Eat her and spare me! There are none left to find. Great! Now we've lost because you wanted to spend all that time by the beach. Told you Looks like a team has been eliminated. Aww. Aww. Look, it's quite a shame that I got eliminated. Yes, well, those are the rules, so. Oh, it really is so unfortunate. Whoa, are those hockey tickets taking those blues? <laughs> oh, right by the ice. The Blues are like my favorite team of any sport ever. I know. I did some research on you. Wait, why? Are you trying to bribe me or something? Bribe is such a strong word. I was just wondering if I could give you something for something that I want in return. I don't know. Look, I know people. I bet I could get you a signed hockey stick. Really? Sweet, it's a deal. No boxes. What do you think you're doing? You can't be bribed. Clearly. She can. This is insane. We're not going to operate a game show like this. Give him the tickets back now. I said no backsies. It's true. He did say no backsies. No backsies? What is this, game of tag on the playground? You can't dismiss the sacred code of no backsies, Florence. What am I supposed to do? Eliminate someone who won the challenge fairly? No. We'll eliminate no one. No one? Yeah, it's like a good practice run or something. Look, we can just rearrange your game so she can get some football tickets. Hockey tickets. St. Louis Blues, not just any old team. Fine, but this is the last time you go to the bribe. Is that clear, Crystal? What are you doing? Carrying the weight of our team per usual. Good thing I came prepared to keep us in the game. But that? This is no time for excuses, Earl. I can't do this all by myself. I mean, I can, but the rules say I need a partner. All right, our next challenge is a battle of the brains. Oh, good. Oh, no. I have all the questions and answers right here. <laughs> Excuse me, but I don't look full of official answers. And you know, like, well, we have all our answers here that our research team has found. But these are from the same university. What university? The University of Warner. What? Of um, Warner, Sand, Grover, Yale, and Tim Garden. Warner, Sand, Grover, Yale, and Tim Garden. Located exactly on the, the northwestern central east coast. The northwestern central east coast. Okay, that sounds pretty pretty legitimate. Uh, we'll be using those answers then. No, I mean this is a very official book. You entrust to me by the university. You can't read it. Why not? Because only I can read it. What is it invisible to everyone but you? Yeah, invisible to everyone but you. You know what? I think you're lying to me. You know, I'm going out on a limb here, but maybe Warner Sigrover Yellington Bar isn't a real school. And I'm going out on another limb, but maybe your smartest person isn't all that smart. No, that's not true. Well, we'll be using the answers we already, uh, we already have, and we'll see how smart everyone really is. Don't worry, I'm going to tell my knowledge of the graduate library and Yeah, right. Each team will be given a whiteboard and something to write. You'll be asked multiple different questions for multiple categories. The first team to get three answers incorrect first will be eliminated. Ready? Okay. The first question is history. Who was the first president of the United States?
George Washington. George Washington. George Washington. George, George Washington. George Washington. Samuel Adams. No! The correct answer is George Washington. What? That can't be right because it wasn't my answer. I also wanted to do something. Well, I mean, Samuel Adams did organize the Boston Tea Party, so if you think. Do you have a letter directly from George Washington in that book saying that he. Was it the first president? Well, no. But like then the correct answer is George Washington. Ah, uh, yes. George Washington, one of our country's greatest leaders, like so many other great leaders. Harriet Tubman, Harrison Ford, me. Tamika! Fine. The next category is math. If Pedro has 10 apples and Tasha gives him 17 more apples, how many apples does Pedro have? She has to get this right. It's basic math. All right, reveal your answers. 27. 27. 27. Hey, the seven is backwards. I was going to start on my own, but I can't Well, I'm just going to say it. No, you're just going to cut me off. No, I promise I won't. OK, we got 27. <laughs> the answer is 27. <laughs> what? You were taking too long. 27. <laughs> well, we need to do first is make numbers and proper fractions so that I can cross multiply. What is your final answer, Odette? My calculation is negative 2 and 4 as the x and y coordinates of the vortex. We only need one number, Odette. But if you take the sum of... It's 10 plus 17, Odette. What is your answer? But you didn't take into consideration... The answer is 27. You got it wrong. From now on, I'm going to answer the questions. Our next category is pop culture. What song artist from the 80s and 90s won two Emmys, six Grammys, and had 11 number one hit songs, including Where Do Broken Hearts Go and How Will I Know? Give it to me, I know this one. No way, Freddie missed two questions. He can't afford to lose this one. All right, reveal your answers. We did not answer because music brings happiness and hope and a safe way to express feelings. When everyone should be cowering in fear, the fear that we Thank you, Golgotha. It's been so long since I've heard a song, been in contact with the outside world. No, it hasn't been. I'm just going to take it you don't have an answer. Well, I said it's Cindy Lauper. No, no, it's Paula Duell. Why Straight do you say that? I don't, don't want to have one. one well, since well, you don't have one final answer, I'm afraid you're going to have to be disqualified from this question. Well, I said Gloria Estefan. Unless that's wrong, then it was Earl's idea. Since the 80s were most atrocious to get fashion, I try to stay clear up with anything that has to do with it. <laughs> this is crazy. This is stuff from like 40 years ago. So you don't have an answer? No, that's not. The correct answer is Whitney Houston. How would you not know that answer? Wait, you knew that answer? Of course, I mean, who wasn't a Whitney Houston fan? The smartest person in the world. So I would ask Sims to know that she's the best singer of all time. So I want to dance with somebody. I'll always love you. Oh, I love that song.
you will be given a canvas, some paints, and a theme that you need, that you'll need to portray. The worst paintings get eliminated. Well, how are we going to determine that? Art is totally subjective. Don't yeah. worry. For all we know, you could just be playing favorites. Don't worry. We'll have someone totally unbiased judge the art. Yes, it's me. You? Yeah, me. <laughs> I'm the one judging art. This has already been decided. Why can't I? Because I'm the collector of fine art from all over the world. What do you have? Well, at home I have a poster of a kid that's hanging onto a tree branch. Hey, right. I think it's pretty neat. That's not neat. I you mean, just tend to be a bit pickier than most people when it comes to art. I mean, the show is only so long. You can only have your rant about symmetry in comparison to Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo da Vinci? You know nothing about art. I mean, do you even know who Michelangelo is? Of course I do. Well, at least. I mean, he's my favorite teenage mutant ninja turtle. Domingo! Look, how about we both judge the art? Someone with an insightful modern take, and then your opinion. I'm the one with an insightful modern opinion. Well, you know what they say, two judges are better than one. This isn't just another ploy to stay others to your side, is it? Me? A ploy? I'm insulted. I generally want to have the best experience for my contestants. Fine. All right, this is Florence. She's the producer of the, show, of the show and will be helping me judge the art. Now here are your themes. Mortimer and Earl have fear, Sever and Sybil have beauty, Eleanor and Quincy have fate, Cleo and Raphael have love, and Golgotha and Fang are happiness. Define happiness. Whatever makes you happy, I guess. Excellent. All right, everyone got what they need. <laughs> On your mark, get set, paint. No, don't do it, don't do it! Trust me, I got this. You're painting on my half. No, your effort ends here. I am well in my territory. No, it doesn't. This is just like the time we was. I wanted to talk about how we did it. We both wanted to rub it. And we both you to present it to the new be quiet. We can't scheme with all this noise. Scheme? You're supposed to be painting. Everything's a scheme if you're evil enough. Maybe we can put this painting in a bottle and put it in the ocean. Maybe it'll find its way back home. Or we can take a picture of it with our phones. It's a great service we have here because we're not really stranded. What are you painting on your half anyway? No, it's a surprise. Are you really? Finger painting. Painting with my fingers, painting with my hands. Anyone can do it, even you can. Excuse me? There's no way I would risk getting anything on this outfit. I'll just watch you keep my designer clothes safe. All right, time's up. Let's see what you have painted. Sabra and Sybil, let's see your painting on beauty. We wrote me, because I am the definition of beauty. No, I'm sorry. What she meant to say was her lovely sister Sabra is the definition of beauty. No, when we decided to write me, I thought we were talking about me. But then we were talking about me. Why can't you accept that? It's a beautiful twice. Well, it's very nice, very, very pretty. Moving on. Hey, you didn't ask for my opinion. Fine, you got 10 seconds. 10 seconds, that is not nearly enough. Every second you spend arguing with me will be, de will be deducted from your analysis time. Fine, I think the colors you use are beautiful. Ellen and Quincy, let's see your picture on fate. It's a representation of how I'm destined to wander these beaches for the rest of my life. What? That's not what we said we were gonna paint. We're leaving tomorrow. This is not our fate. She's still in her fantasy land of help and rescue. She doesn't know. No, that. you don't know that. Well, I think it's pretty neat. Florence, I think the composition is good. And the shading is All right, good. moving on. That was not 10 seconds. You got boring. Either say something more interesting or talk faster. But <sighs> go with that fan. Let's see your picture on happiness. Ah! <laughs> How is that <coughs> happiness? You said it's what happiness means to us. And we're happiest when we're being evil. That painting is just repulsive, inhumane, disturbing. Those are all the terms I would use to describe that. Florence? I think that it's, even though it is more dark painting, there's good balance of light and dark. All right, Mortimer and Earl, let's see your picture on fear. Oh. Okay, that is... It's beautiful. It is? Yes. It represents how fear is coming into us, coming in from all different aspects of our lives, shaping us, making the only true thing we have to fear is ourselves. Actually, it was just supposed to be a spider. It has like 11 legs. Well, I would mess up a couple of times, so each time I did, I would just draw a new one. 
but it still looks good, right? Right? Yeah. Raphael and Cleo, let's see your picture on love. I call this one Happy Heart. Me and Raphael here. My scarf! You finger paint and then touch my clothes? I cannot believe I'm sorry, I... No, don't touch me. My whole outfit's worth more than you making you, and you just ruined my... Try to calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. My clothes are like my babies. I can't... Aren't you being a little overdramatic? I am never overdramatic. <laughs> I'd rather die than... Well, maybe we can. No. You know what? I'm done. If my clothing is at risk, then this is not a game for me. So you're forfeiting. Forfeiting yourself and your teammate, Cleo? Yes, I need to focus on what's really important. Don't worry, we're gonna go straight to the dry cleaning to get your fix. Yes, we are. I'm sorry to say this, Cleo, but it looks like your time on Survive and Thrive has come to an end. Aww. Well, that's okay. I had fun playing, and all that matters is that I had fun. The model of losers. Let's hear it for the pair of Cleo and Raffaella. got eliminated, so I guess not. Perfect, another team out. It'll be so great when I win. Don't you mean when we win? Earl, let's be real. We both know I'm the bronze and the brains of the separation, and quite honestly, the beauty too. I don't really need you at all. The only reason you're here is because the rules say so. All I need you to do is stand by my side and stay out of my way. Oh, okay. Our next contest is a pie eating contest. Where on earth have you been? I'm so full. Oh no, there I was, about to starve to death. Eleanor, you were not about to- And then I saw them, they were just there. I couldn't help myself, I just started- She ate them all, every last one. Eleanor! Well, I guess they're eliminated too then. Might need a moment to figure this all out, so... No, I'll need a minute to figure this out. You're fired! Wait, you can't do that now! Dominga, it was your idea to let someone be cast around the show. Now our next challenge is ruined. I'm done with your new ideas and leadership. But, but, but... Just pack up your trailer, Dominga. Florence, you can't. Can and did. Just go. Just give us 15 minutes, guys. I have to find a new post.
new pose can't be that hard. I'm sure I was, I doubt that. <laughs> By chance, how did you feel about hosting? Me, host? Oh no, I was behind the scenes for a reason. Well, I'm sure I'll find someone far better than Domingo. If you're not worried about it, why did you ask me, a camera shy crew member, to host? I'm sure I'll find someone. I totally did. What? I, I, I will. What do you mean you can't find me anywhere? This is outrageous. I am, well, was the host of the most popular show around, and now you can't find me new work? What kind of agent are you? Just work harder and find me a new gig. Don't take no for an answer. Got it? Okay. Love you too, Mom. See you when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. I was meant for the limelight. What do you mean there are no other hosts available? None? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What am I supposed to do? Go crawling back to her? Well, hello there, Florence. I couldn't help but ho overhear you're desperate for a host. I'm gonna have to call you back. What do you want, Domingo? More like, what do you need? You are in need of a host, and I just so happen to be an incredible and available option. The only factor playing into this now is cost. What do you mean, cost? Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but there seems to be a shortage of hosts. When something becomes less available, it becomes more valuable, therefore more expensive. Are you really asking for a raise? Not asking, demanding. I want double my initial pay. Double? Not only do you not deserve it, we can't afford it. Well, I guess you're without a host then. No, we're not. Who's gonna do it? Me. You? You don't have a charismatic bone in your body. No one would watch that. Standing there and being pretty can't be that hard. Trust me, it's a lot more than that. Then it will be totally my show. No more arrogance, no more new ideas, and... I, hey, Florence, I got a great new idea for a show. Oh, no, 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 no. This time we're sticking to my plan. I am totally in control. Won't you even look at it? No. But it's, no. It's, no. It's, no. I'll look at it, girl. You don't even work here anymore. That doesn't mean I can't see it. Come here. Here. Wow, this... This is incredible. It's new. It's fresh. <laughs> Why? What is it? Oh, are you suddenly interested now? Maybe. What is it? Just something I thought I'd go for a break. You know what? Let's roll with this. Yeah. It'll be a real, yeah, it'll be a real twist. What inspired this? I just want everyone to get what they deserve. Well, we'll see what happens next year. <laughs> are we starting soon? Yeah, we have some major plotting for world domination down after this. Yeah, okay, everyone. All right, next chance. Come on. All right, so I'm the host now. Really? Yes, really. We had some problems with our last time. We'll see how this goes. Yes, we will. All right, starting in five, four, <coughs> three, two. Hi there. Um, this is Thrive and I mean, Survive and Thrive. And uh, I'm Florence and uh, this is game. So, like, uh, let's just play it. What's the game? What? What's the game we're playing? Right, me, the host, would explain the game to you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of this word game thing. Yeah, like Scrabble? Oh, I'm awesome at Scrabble. I got this in the bag. No, not like Scrabble. It's kind of this game where, um, <laughs> like, you know. No, no, we don't. And you said like, you could host. Looks like someone needs some help. And cut! All right, so maybe I'm not cut out to host. No, not maybe. Definitely not cut out to be a host. No one likes a bloater, Domingo. So double pay? Not a chance. Then no deal. Same pay, you can get a chocolate fountain in your trailer. Really? Yes, dude. Man, I made all that chocolate goodness, you've got a deal. Just do better than I do. That won't be hard. All right, in five, four, three, two. Welcome back to Survive and Thrive. I'm Domingo, and let's get back to the game. All right, next we're going to be playing a game called What's the Word? A word will be held up on a card by a stagehand. One person from each pair will be blindfolded and will have to guess the word correctly while the other half of the pair describes it. When you get one correct, you will hear this sound. After three words, you will switch and then the person with the least amount incorrect wins. I mean, gets eliminated, sorry. Okay, Sabra and Sybil, you're up first. No. Good. Okay, begin. You never want to have any of this. I do want to have fun. 
Last week, you had one of these where you became a famous chef and you had a secret recipe, but you wouldn't tell anyone the recipe. And then one day you got arrested because the first ingredient in the recipe was the tears of my enemies. You weren't supposed to tell anyone about the dream. You take any of mine of this seriously. No, Sybil, no one's gonna take a painting with a dog eating a hot dog with the caption under it and under it, cannibalism at its finest. Seriously, like no one's gonna call that art. All right, switch. See? Nope. All right, begin. You were this of me when I got to lead in the Snow White play for our school musical, and you didn't want you talking, so they made you eighth door, dwarf, hush the quiet dwarf. I didn't even want a part, I wasn't jealous. You saw one of these in the, guy, in the sky and said it was an alien coming to abduct everyone's pinky toes and sell them on the black market because pinky toes are the most underrated yet valuable toe. That was a real alien. You'll be sorry when I have all my toes intact and you'll be walking around with the discomfort of having a four-toed foot. I promise, it wasn't just a balloon. Ooh, this is an easy one. I'm this. Annoying. No. A nuisance. No. The one thing preventing me from being happy and achieving my goals in life. I was so much happy with me. School. Just like, I'm I buy that vegan free sushi. And this the team time. got four or five out of six correctly. Now let's see how our other teams do. Go with that, Faye. You're up next. Can you see? Why should you care? Good enough for me. <laughs> All right, begin. You love to suck out of people's lives. Joy. This matches your sense of humor. Dark. You have very little of this for humanity. Patience. Oh, use wrong kind of patience. Yeah, the one held up was the kind sick in the hospital, not being understanding a kind. Oh, we'll have to go to our producer on this one. Florence? Well... Did um, I say the word patience or not? And the rules, it doesn't matter what context is under as long as I'm saying the word. Good point. I'll allow it. All right, begin. This is my favorite animal. Spider. Makes us cringe when we are in its path. The sun. It makes us happy when we see children do this. Cry. <laughs> well, six out of six correctly. That was amazing. Say, how'd you perfect that so well? Evil minds think alike. Okay. Mortimer and Earl, you're up next. Remember, don't ruin this for me. I won't ruin anything for you. Can you see? No. All right, begin. You fell off the swing your A and broke your arm. Swing. You have one of these. His name is Mr. Bubbles. Fish. Your brother played this in high school. Baseball. Wow, another impressive round. I mean, I am a pretty good guesser. Well, if you're so good at guessing, let's see how good you are at giving hits. <laughs> All right, begin. Um, you learn stuff because of them. Mentor. No, you know stuff. Role model. Um, no. Can I skip a word? You'll automatically get it incorrect. The other ones have to be easier. Oh, okay. Um, it has lots of leg things. Squid, starfish. No. Can I skip again? Oh, okay. Um, it's a drink. Water, milk, coffee, soda, lemonade, oh, fruit punch, tea. Yes, tea. <laughs> well, your second run wasn't as impressive, leaving you with a total of four out of six. That's the worst score in the group, so I'm afraid. Wait, I'm looking at the words that Goldust and Bang were planning to use, and I noticed that none of them were on here. None of them? It was like they were added without someone working to share knowledge knowing about it. Wait, it's like they cheated. Like something an evil person would do. Hey, just because they're evil doesn't mean we're always guilty. Sure. Stereotype the evil people. So typical. We actually came here to win this thing fair and square. Fair? You stole our duck from us in the first round. I find that accusation offensive. When we're turning with your duck, and I quote, when is so much more satisfying when you cheat. Note to self, be more discreet when planning bigger plots, and I told you, patience ends in C-E, not T-S. Sorry. All right. 
right, we don't want to have to do it this way. Give us the prize money and no one gets hurt. Prize money? Haven't you ever seen the show before? There's no prize money. Just a standard, just no prize money. Just a standard plastic crown and trophy. A gold crown and trophy? With real diamonds in it? No, just a standard plastic crown and trophy. Nothing fancy. What? This is an outrage! What was the point of those flying and skinny if there was no prize win? There was none. I'm going to have to ask you two to leave now. We're here. Leave. Your rule of law is blah, 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 blah. Just get off the stage. We can continue. We as well, you'll be the first one I finish. Let's hear it for Golgotha and Fang. Join twins is not part of the plan. Look, we're still using your idea. Whether you win or not is totally irrelevant. What? I mean, if we could guarantee you would win, the whole show would be rigged. You have to win fair and square. In a three legged race against someone with three legs. <laughs> that sounds like a you problem, doesn't it? But that. Yeah. Well, good luck. I'm sure you'll figure something out. Alright, for those of you who aren't conjoined together, you will be tied together instead. This is what you're going to do. You're going to race around the track we have marked out once. The pairs that get past the finish line first wins. Ready? Prepare to eat our dust. There's no way you'll catch us. Get set. You have to win. I know. I already made my mind for the Go. Are you in? Star 
are rhyming about, about their dirt roads and multi-million dollar mansions. First, french fries dipped in milkshakes, then curling, and now this? It's like everything I know about you is a lie! That's because you didn't know my favorite food or sport. No, because on top of your total inability to know what a sport is, you're someone who dipped your french fries in milkshakes and listens to country. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for our new champion of Survive and Thrive, Earl! <laughs>